Blue Sound keeps expanding their product range, and this time downwards. For only 699 euros, you get a full-fledged Blue Sound experience combined with a 2x40 watts Class D amp and MQA. Blue Sound offers, next to streaming speakers, a soundbar and a subwoofer, a number of streamers, network players if you will. These are the Node which I reviewed, the Fold that does the same plus ripping and storing on an internal hard disk and now two streamers with built in amplifiers. The Power Node and the Power Node Edge. The Power Node outputs 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms and retails at 999. The Power Note Edge outputs 40 watts per channel into 8 ohms and retails at 699. It's the latter that I review here. It comes in both black and white versions and has a touch controls on the sloping front. But let's first see how the Edge, as I will call it from here on, is to be used. The Edge of course needs to be connected to a set of loudspeakers. A physical headphones output lacks since they can be connected over Bluetooth, even when a source is connected to Bluetooth too. A connection to your home network over cable or Wi-Fi is needed to access the internet streaming services and eventually music on your computer or NAS. Your home network's Wi-Fi access is also needed since a smartphone, tablet or computer is used to control the edge. Of course a tablet is the most convenient under living room conditions. You could also hook up a USB drive containing music and play from it. A CD player can be connected digitally over a Toslink to Mini Toslink optical cable or analog over an RCA 3.5mm mini jack cable. Other analog sources could be connected over an RCA to 3.5mm mini jack cable too. Both the optical and the analog input use the same connector, so it's one or the other. The only other external source that can be physically connected is a TV using HDMI eARC. Furthermore, Bluetooth and Apple AirPlay sources can be connected too. If you have Rune running, the Edge can also function as a Rune endpoint. The black or white plastic housing measures 290 by 193 by 45 mm and weighs 1.4 kg. On the sloping front in the middle there is a status indicator. The status is indicated by several solid or flashing colors. It also doubles as a play pause button. Below it the eye for the infrared remote control. The Edge comes without a remote control but can learn infrared codes from any remote control you already own. To both sides of the play pause button you find the previous and next track buttons and the dots further to the outside are for volume control. All these functions can also be controlled from an infrared remote or from the free Blue Sound app on a smartphone, tablet or computer. The mains input on an ICC 7 connector that those without beards know from their shavers. To the left the Ethernet socket, a USB-A connector for storage media, the combined digital and analog input, the input for an infrared sensor if you have the edge placed out of sight and the HDMI eARC input to connect your TV to. Then the outputs, starting with the subwoofer output. It normally passes on the combined left and right channels filtered at 80 Hz at line level while the loudspeakers deliver full bandwidth. This can be changed in the app so that the loudspeaker outputs and the sub outputs are filtered at a frequency between 40 and 200 Hz. The left loudspeaker is to be connected here, the right one here. The terminals accept bare wires and forks. When the caps are removed they also accept banana plugs. Opening the edge does violate warranty conditions, you have me to do that. It opens as a clamshell lacking hinges. The top part has a circuit board for the transport functions. The bottom part holds two main ports. The bottom one is where the switch mode power supply is situated. 
The top one holds the Blue Sound system board with on it the Bluetooth radio. The second one is found here. This way you can stream music from an external source using Bluetooth and listen to it over Bluetooth to your wireless headphones. Wi-Fi is taken care of by one of the two radios too. Below this cooling profile is the Exine digital audio converter and amplifier controller. This by the way is a Dutch development linked to the University of Twente in Enschede and works like this. There is an I2S digital input signal that is fed to the digital loop filter. It is converted to pulse width modulation and sent to the power stage that after passing the reconstruction filter feeds the loudspeakers. That output signal is also sent over a feedback loop to an analog to digital converter to put input into the loop filter to correct for errors. The digital loop filter works like this. The digital audio is input at the top. It is converted to pulse width modulation, sent to the power stage, passes the reconstruction filter to the speakers. That signal is also sent to an analog to digital converter, inverted and added to the input signal. This way the artifacts that are caused by the ever varying impedance of the loudspeakers are corrected. Basically you use a smartphone, tablet or computer to control the edge. Play, pause, skip and volume can be controlled from the front or from an infrared remote you already have and learn the IR codes to the edge. Which by the way is rather simple. Since I have shown the Blue Sound app numerous times, I'll show you the short description I did in the 2021 Blue Sound Node review. The Blue Sound app controls all the functionality of the Blue Sound compatible gear in your network. As you can see, it found three Blue Sound players: the Node 2 IMS Setup 2, the new Node, and the NAD T758 version 2 AV receiver that takes part in my surround setup. If you like, you can combine them into one group and play music throughout the house. Let's select the new node. Moving to the other side you see the sources available to the node. The library shows the music I have stored on my rock music server. Since it also shares the volume holding the music files, I pointed Bluesound to that SMB volume for my music. All settings by the way were automatically copied from the other Bluesound devices, so the Deezer, Tidal and Cobus accounts were immediately copied to the new node. A nice feature is that you can program the node to accept commands from your remote control. So if you have an amp or receiver that also has controls for a CD player and you don't use a CD player anymore, just learn the infrared signals to the node. Since all Blue Sound equipment is Rune ready, you can also use Rune to send music to the edge. As soon as the edge is connected to your network, it shows up in Rune. Select Settings followed by Audio and you can activate the edge. Blue Sound also excels in the number of streaming services they support, as can be seen from this list. Not all streaming services are available in all countries and of course you need a subscription for all of them. Then about placement. You can of course place the edge on a rack or in a cabinet, but Bluesound also provides a simple solution to mount it on the wall. A metal bracket is then screwed to the wall and a special round hook is mounted on the bottom of the edge. It slides into the bracket and can be rotated. A neat solution. The edge was connected to the modern short Avant 902 loudspeakers over Kimball 4PR cable. The connection to my network and internet was over an Uptone Audio Ether region, admittedly slightly over the top, but that's what available in the studio. For Blue Sound, the music was on a Synology NAS. The Rune Rock server runs on an Intel NUC 10i7 FNH, and the edge was controlled over an iPad Pro. I've heard that audio had not evolved over the last one or two decades. This is not true as the edge proves. It sounds quite open and projects a proper stereo image. Especially the lows are well controlled up to the point where more power would be needed. 
and that on affordable speakers that costed around 400 euros a pair 15 to 20 years ago. I was looking around for a pair of contemporary loudspeakers in the same price category. When picking up the edge at the Dutch distributor, this came up, and I was offered a pair of Dali Oberon loudspeakers for evaluation. So I took them home and after listening with my usual speakers and having the Dalis burned in for 4 times 24 hours, I switched them with the modern shorts. Same setup, but now with the 458 euros Dalis. The Dalis show that the Edge offers even more quality. The stereo image was wider and deeper, instruments were better in focus, mid lows were less present, opening the sound somewhat more. At the same time, deeper lows were more present. Don't think it's suited for a dance party with 20 people. The single 5.25 inch port loaded woofer combined with 86 dB efficiency would then need more than the 40 watts the Edge can deliver. But in a moderately sized room, it can have you enjoy the details in music at normal listening level in a way I thought impossible say 10 years ago. Now there's a simple trick to expand quality, lows and loudness by adding a subwoofer. With bigger amps I always advise to connect the sub to the loudspeaker terminals, provided the sub has a high level input. But this time I wanted to limit the amount of lows the Dalis had to produce. So I connected the low level input of my RELT5 subwoofer to the sub out on the edge. I then opened the audio menu in the settings menu, switched on the subwoofer function and raised the crossover frequency to 100 Hz. Now the dial is needed to reproduce about an octave less in the lows, reducing the cone movement and the need for power. The RELT T5 is of course out of balance price wise, but you can already buy a proper subwoofer for 450 euros. Since the speakers now had to work less hard, the sound quality further increased while the bass foundation gave it more authority when rightly adjusted. See my video Subwoofer Placement and Settings. It's not the quality of my reference setup 2B, but it now comes clearly more in the direction as long as you don't expect it to blast you away. But if you go for refinement and details, the, this combo will surely do that. The Edge sets you back 699 euros, including 22% VAT. Add to that a set of speakers of 450 euros, and you can choose for the more refined model like the Dali Oberon 1 I used here, or a less refined, louder playing pair. And you have a complete stereo that is easy to place, easy to operate, and well sounding for 1149 euros. Less than many pay for their iPhone and about the same as wireless plastic speakers that sound rather less refined. Add a sub in the same price category and you'll end up spending about 1600 euros including VAT. Alternatively you could go for my setup 3 with the Dalis if you like. A slightly different balance, taking more space and slightly harder to operate. I'll have to go for separate components to review network players, but else? and you will understand the Dalis will be the new speakers in setup 3. Which brings us to the end of this show. As usual, there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. I will reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video in the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you on the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.